Hello. Merry Christmas. I'm Reverend Mark Ritten with the Bowman Charge of the United Methodist Church, and yes, I am recording this on Christmas Day. Um, wife and I just finished our Christmas dinner, and I thank her very much for the wonderful job she did. Uh, since it's just the two of us this year, we kind of cut back on how much and what we prepare. So uh, again, I thank every I thank her for a wonderful job that she did, and I hope you all had a very merry Christmas. Uh, you're probably still celebrating to some extent, and that's okay. Uh, I've got to wanted to get this recorded because at 3:30, my favorite football team, the Green Bay Packers, will be playing on TV. So anyway, again, thank you for joining me today. Uh, this is the sermon that I will be preaching tomorrow, which will be December 26th, and it's the last Sunday of the year. So, 2022 is right around the corner. Let's hope and pray that it is much better than 2021 was. You all can relate what I'm saying. I'm sure I'm not going to go into it. Anyway, let's open with a word of prayer. O oh Lord, the house of our soul is narrow. Enlarge it that thou may enter in. It is ruinous. I will repair it. It displeases thy sight. We confess it. We know. But who shall cleanse it? Or to whom shall we cry but unto thee? Cleanse us from our secret faults, O Lord, and spare thy servants from strange sins. We ask these things and pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, the uh, lectionary reading from the New Testament comes from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, verses 41 through 52. Again, that's the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. And I've entitled this sermon, Jesus' Mom and Dad. So, here now the inspired, inerrant word of God. Again, chapter 2 of Luke, beginning in verse 41 and going to the end. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you ask me, or why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in knowledge and stature, and in favor with God and men. He says the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Again, that came from <coughs> excuse me, from Luke's Gospel, the second chapter, verses forty one through fifty two. And again, the name of the sermon or title of the sermon is Jesus' mom and dad. Jewish law required all Jewish people 
to make these pilgrimages down to Jerusalem. Those of you who have children know what it's like to travel with small children, or for that matter, with any age child. When we travel with the whole family, there are a lot of things that we need to take along. Not just a suitcase and a laptop or a cell phone, but also things like toys, snacks, and a host of other things. Sometimes the car is quiet and everything's peaceful. Then one of the kids says, Hey, keep your hands to yourself. Or, I want to play with that. You had your turn. Or, I have to go to the bathroom. And then there's the most famous of all. Are we there yet? That isn't to say that traveling with a family is bad. Just that it can be difficult. It takes energy to shepherd a family through two weeks on the road. It takes money and a lot of patience. Luke says Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. That was quite a trip. If you look at a map of Israel, Nazareth is just a few inches from Jerusalem. But those few inches, they translate into 80 miles each direction. And they had to walk. Oh, I suppose they could have a, a donkey or a camel. Mary could ride on the donkey part of the way. But that was no bargain either. When you're walking, riding the donkey looks like fun. But it isn't take too many hours on the donkey's back to realize that walking is just as good. A trip from Nazareth to Jerusalem would take three or four days each way. A solid week on the road, and then another week in Jerusalem. So you're talking two weeks. No minivan, no CDs, no iPad, no iPhone, no McDonald's, no Happy Meals. And there certainly weren't any motels. However, the trip wasn't always boring. The men would walk together and talk about crops and livestock and the prices of the various goods. Women would get to be better acquainted with the other wives. Children would play together as they walked along the road. Then there was the excitement of visiting the big city and, of course, the splendor of the temple. I'm convinced that God chose Joseph and Mary to be mom and dad to Jesus in part because they were the kind of people who would make that journey every single year. God wanted Jesus to grow up with parents who loved God. Like every child, Jesus had a lot to learn, and God wanted him to learn it from godly parents. I'm also convinced that God chose Joseph and Mary because he knew they'd do the will of their Heavenly Father. I'm confident that God chose Mary and Joseph to serve as Jesus' parents because God knew that they would raise Jesus to be strong in the faith. That Mary and Joseph would take Jesus to the temple every single year. That they would take him to the synagogue for his teaching. That they would teach him the great Bible stories. And that they would have prayer with him every single day. 
Jesus needed parents like that so he could grow up strong. So he could do the work that his father had sent him to do, his heavenly father. So he could face the critics without flinching. So that he would be able to keep going when the going got tough. There's a part of our text that I always find amazing. The part where the family begins a long journey back home. And my, we might wonder how Joseph and Mary could have gone a day's journey before discovering that Jesus was missing. Any parent who has lost a child in a store can surely relate. Earlier I mentioned that Jesus is, or that Jewish law, I'm sorry, required all the people to attend the various Jewish festivals. Families usually travel together. And when I speak of families, I'm not speaking of just the immediate family, but the extended family as well. I'm sure that Joseph and Mary began the journey home. They assumed that Jesus was with one of the other relatives. Perhaps he had been playing with his cousin John and they were just off together and traveling. He, maybe he was traveling with John's parents, Zechariah and Elizabeth. The other thing that I believe is noteworthy in our scripture lesson is that when Joseph and Mary finally find Jesus, he's in the temple listening and talking with the scholars there. Even at the very early age of 12 years old, our text tells us that all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. I believe God, probably through the workings of the Holy Spirit, was already growing Jesus in the faith. Could God have done it without Mary and Joseph? Probably. But God didn't. Throughout history, God had chosen particular men and women to do a particular work. In Christian circles, we call that a vocation or a calling. Sometimes the calling is huge. For instance, God called Paul to, take, to travel the world with the, as the first great Christian missionary. More often, the calling is modest. I believe that every one of us has a calling of some sort, a responsibility given by God that will not be accomplished unless we accomplish it. God called Mary and Joseph to be mom and dad to the boy Jesus. And they did a great job. What has God called you to be? There are a variety of callings that any of you can fulfill. You can serve on one of the church committees. Your calling may be something as simple as being one of those who helps clean up after the event at the church. If you're not sure what your calling is, pray about it. Ask God to speak to you and show you what your particular calling is. Then ask him to give you the strength and courage to accept that calling and to follow through on that calling. Finally, a word to the parents and, yes, even the grandparents among you. I don't know all of the things that God has called you to do, but I do know this. God has called you to be the kind of parents that Jesus had. The kind of parents who lives his or her life by faith and who helps your children or grandchildren to grow in the faith. The kind of parent or grandparent who attends church every Sunday and who takes their children and grandchildren with them. The kind of parent or grandparent who looks for opportunities to help your child or grandchild grow in the faith. Nobody else can be mom and dad to your child. Nobody can take your place. 
Yes, sometimes grandparents are called upon to fill in for mom and dad. But whenever possible, a child should be raised by his or her natural parents. Parents and grandparents, do your best to help your child or grandchild grow in faith. Ask God for help. Ask him to help in doing what you aren't able to do on your own. You and God together will make a mighty team. And your child or grandchild will bless you because you did that. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, this is Christmas Day for me, and it will be the day after Christmas when I preach this at all three churches. And so it's traditionally the day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. It is a time of love, joy, and hope. And so, Lord, we just ask that this feeling of love, joy, and hope will continue to be with us throughout this Christmas season, but more importantly, help us take it through the coming year. We hope and pray that 2022 will be much better than 2021. Again, Lord, we thank you for the parents who bring their children and the grandparents who bring their grandchildren to the church each and every Sunday. Part of the reason that this country is in the problems that we're having is because we've gotten away from worship. From attending church on Sundays. And just attending church isn't necessarily worship. We need to get back to a time when families gathered around the kitchen table for supper and had a word of prayer before they began to eat. Today we live in a hustle bustle world. Seems like everything wants a piece of our time. And so, unfortunately, too many people forget to put God into that equation. We need to have God a part, as a part of our life every single day. Not just Sunday. Not just for an hour on Sunday. But every single day. I make it a habit of asking a blessing on all the food that I eat, breakfast, lunch, and supper. I say my morning prayers before I get out of bed. I say my evening prayers before I go to sleep. That is communication. That is building a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and with our Heavenly Father. And as Jesus pointed out in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If we want to get to heaven, we've got to have that personal relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord... During this time of year, if there is anybody out there who has not yet given their life over to you, I pray that you will send your spirit to work with their spirit, because Lord, we know that you want all of us to be in heaven with you. You don't want any of us to be condemned to the lake of fire for eternity. But that's what will happen if we don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ. If our name isn't written in books, Lamb of in the Lamb's book of, of life, we ain't going to be in heaven. So again, Lord, if there's anybody out there who's not yet made that commitment, work with their spirit during this time of year. Help them realize that they need you, Jesus. Help them to develop that relationship with you. 
And so, Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you've already bestowed upon each and every one of us. We ask that you will continue to work with us, help us, and guide us in our daily lives. All honor and glory belong to you. And we ask these things and pray this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I thank you for tuning in. I hope you uh, have a remainder of the Merry Christmas from the remainder of the day. And I will look forward to seeing all of you next year. And next year is just around the corner. God bless. Take care. Love you. And may the good Lord watch over you, guide you, and bless you.